everyone welcome back to code grid today i am stepping out of my comfort zone to share my very first youtube video with my own voice it might not sound perfect and since english isn't my first language please bear with me if you find any gaps it was a bit of a challenge and i have always been hesitant but i knew i needed to start somewhere so here i am sharing my first video with voice over Let's talk about what we will be building today. I recently discovered this SOTD on awards featuring a very good landing page reveal animation. I was so inspired that I decided to recreate it using HTML, CSS and GSAP using the timeline animation. This tutorial will be very straightforward. So without further ado, let's dive in. begin by creating a container inside this container we will have two main sections the loader and the website content first within the loader we will make another container to hold all our images we are going to add seven image wrappers here each containing an image we will place the images inside these wrappers with the middle one specifically reserved for the logo We will assign it an ID of loader logo because we will exclude it from the clip animations later on. Next, let's move on to creating some dummy website content. We will start with a navigation bar. This navbar will include three items, each with anchor tags for the links. The middle link will get an ID of logo for some extra styling we will do later using CSS. After the nav, we will set up our main header. We will create a hero container for this where we will add three wrappers. Each wrapper will contain a line of our heading text. We are organizing it in this way to make it easier to animate each line with a clip mask later on. Once we have got the right text for our headings, the next step is to add a footer. In the footer, we will include four wrappers for images. The primary reason we are using wrappers throughout is to facilitate animation using clip mask. We will apply clip mask to these wrappers using CSS and animate the transform properties of the elements inside it to create our reveal animations. And that covers the setup. Now let's move on to CSS. Let's move on to CSS. First, we are setting a global style to make everything consistent. For that, we will zero out margins and paddings and use box sizing to border box on every element. Next, for the body, we are going to apply a generic font family, set a background color and ensure overflow is hidden to prevent any unnecessary scrolling. Moving on to the loader, we are setting a position of fixed so it stays over our content. It will cover the entire viewport with a width of 100 viewport width and a height of 100 viewport height. Let's give it a solid black background and to make it sure it doesn't interfere with the content below it, we will set the pointer events to none. Lastly, we will apply a clip mask to it which we can later animate to reveal the underlying content. For the image container inside our loader, we are setting its width to 150% to create a bit of an overlap effect since we will be adding kind of sliding animation to it on the x-axis and for that we will also set position absolute of it and center it perfectly using top left and transform properties we are using flex display to line up the images with uh, 50 pixels of gap between them for some breathing room we will again apply the same clip mask to it to 
the image containers we will also set its position to relative since we want to use the transform animations on them for even spacing we will set flex to one and apply a clip mask to it which we can later use to animate for the outro animation for the images themselves we are setting them to fill the wrappers entirely with object fit cover to ensure they are scaled correctly covering the area without losing their aspect ratio for our navbar we are making it span the full width with 30 pixels of padding it's displayed as a flex container to align items in center and have the new montreal font Each navigation item is given a relative position for the transform animation and equal share of space. The second nav item, likely our logo, is centered with a unique font and have some extra font styling. The third item aligns to the right, maintaining the balance. Now for the logo link, we are keeping the text as is without any transformations. Uh, for the other links, we are styling it to be the uppercase without underlines and have a black color. For the hero section, we are again making sure that it takes the full width and positioning it absolutely to sit at center vertically with a slight adjustment to ensure it's perfectly centered. The text here is all uppercase, styled with the Migra font. Inside the hero, our main heading is also set to span the full width and centered. We are using a dynamic font size of 4 viewport width to ensure it scales nicely across different screen sizes. We will again make it a clip mask just so the H1s can be animated later. Each H1 will of course need position relative to enable the transform animation have some basic font styling for added emphasis spans within the h1 tag switch to a different font with a bolder weight for the footer we are ensuring it stretches across the full width and securing it to the bottom right of the screen with a 30 pixel offset it's displayed as a flex container again aligning its contents to the end using align items with a 10 pixel of gap between the elements the clip path is again used here to make image animations look better each item within the footer is positioned relatively with a fixed size of 100 pixels by 100 pixels and that wraps up our css setup next we are bringing everything to life with animations let's dive into gsap With our CSS in place, it's time to add motion to our project. We begin by listening for the DOM content loaded event to ensure our JavaScript runs only after the HTML is fully loaded. Once triggered, we use GSAP to set initial positions, preparing our elements for animation. We push the image elements down by 500 pixels and move the loader images container to the right by 500 pixels. The nav item along with h1, the item and the footer are slightly pushed towards bottom and made transparent as well. Setting them for slide in animation. Then we will create a GSEP timeline with a slight delay. Finally, we will add the transform animations to each element that runs sequentially one after another with appropriate delay. 
we are not doing much apart from updating the x and y properties to create the slide in animations you might need to set up some negative delays on some elements if if you want those elements to start animating before their turn comes and that's a wrap I hope you find this video helpful. If there is anything in the GSAP code that seems tricky or if you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment below. Though it's straightforward, I am here to help clarify anything. Looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for watching.